Hello and welcome back. So Eotas uh, strolled through this Inguitian dig site and we don't really have a plan how to take him out. <clears throat> but I guess it's nice that we are finding old friends. Elot is not dead, Ether is not dead. And I'm not sure what would happen, what happens if you actually uh, choose the... Uh, choose uh, the everything went wrong start at the beginning. You just not get companions? The copper bowl has tarnished to a dull blue-green. Grime and dust coat the surface in a thin film. Examine the bowl more closely. At the bottom of the bowl is a shallow circular depression. You recognize the offering bowl, an artifact found in many Inguitian ruins. It would have been intended for use only by Inguitians who held high rank or had uh, made some great achievement. In an arena such as this, a champion might fulfill that role. So not me? Poor fools. They were unprepared for this. Yeah, not like he even entered this place. They were just running away, trying not to die, but <clears throat> yeah, that didn't really work out. Oh, this is a big place. Part of the statue near the legs has been forcibly removed. What? A pirate? A gold soldier? Nice. All that remains of this inscription is Raka the Fort Fortunate. The stone around it is worn smooth. Okay. Could be a fight. Uh oh, Villa Visp. Let's go. <clears throat> hmm. Be sick. Uh oh, that's not good. Maybe he shouldn't have an AI. That that's gonna be bad. Let's retarget it. Oh, I managed to do it, just in time. Not to alarm you, but I'm... What? We're fine. It's working perfectly. Confused Sporling. Yeah, she doesn't have any AI. <clears throat> so she doesn't even try to attack. Uh, that's a bit too much. Let's just attack. Okay. Looks good. Is that it? No problem. So, these a mushroom. Uh, guys had nothing in them. The balls here have collapsed inward, bearing any further progress. All right. What is this? Menagerie. Sure. After him. I'm not sure Soti running in is really a good idea. I shall. And the thing is, uh, these spells are have friendly fire, so I need to be careful. Why not? Vessel bone. Uh oh. Yeah. I'm first. Are they resistant to cold? Actually, they are fairly resistant to cold. I suspected that to be the case. 
because they are ghosts. Pillar of Fate? Do that. Can I reposition a lot in a way that we might be able to use? Fan of Flames. Very. Specifically. No, let's get closer. Okay. It's going. Quick, toss me something else. Hit me again and I'll hit you back. What is this thing? We're no longer flanked and blinded. Oh, it's already dead. Yeah, pistol, whatever. I'm just gonna take it all into the stash. Animancer's hat. <clears throat> it has been a stroke of unimaginable fortune to find Adravain in such pristine condition. The essence is so concentrated here that even from the far side of the corridor, the pillar's light pulses like a star. At times I almost feel as if I can sense it, like the warmth of sunlight upon the skin. We'll need to reinforce the central chamber before attempting further excavations. The ruins are unstable and the cellar's motley workforce of savages and paupers grows more fearful by the day. With the assistance of a single watcher, we could trace the ascents in the primary vein and isolate the deposits uh, worthy of extraction. I've petitioned the director Castol in Nakataka for such a resource, but I'm continually rebuffed. The great and ancient city of Nakataka is so old that its foundations are said to predate the great Huana cataclysm of legend. In recent years, the native Huana population have been crowded by the arrival of Valen and uh, Ruatean colonists, traders and soldiers. It is unthinkable that the Valen trading company cannot isolate within the vast borders of its considerable influence a single suitable candidate. I must assume that the wretched Elat woman is hoarding them for her fanciful experiments. Transportation. As if we have the time to expend on such trivialities. Okay. Sure. What a stroke of luck. I am a watcher. The watcher. That just makes me feel not that special. <laughs> That's Odorisi. Is is it? I didn't know. Uh, frozen mid stride, uh, this grim figure is turned toward the colossal pillar of Adra that dominates the chamber. The ashen corpse's uh, outstretched hand rests upon the crystal's uh, dulled surface. <clears throat> Clutched tightly in the remains of a fist is a bundle of papers, bound together by a leather cord. Several more pages are scattered on the ground at your feet. This one's ashen. Means he ain't got no soul for me to tend to, right? Yep. As you pull the papers free, the ashen fingers gripping them uh, slow away, disintegrating into a fine plume of dust. Standing here by the lone figure, uh, you are struck with a feeling of dread. The air around you, the very motes of ash and dust, all of it is stagnant and still. The feeling grows worse when you look up at the Aedra, and sense no energy flowing into its surface, it is as Though it has been disconnected from the wheel. You place your hand against the pillar of luminous Audra. A dim, warm light emanates from the surface. 
but it feels cool to the touch. Pinpricks dance along your fingers, uncomfortable, but not painful. A woman's voice, scratchy, distant, and halting, echoes in your mind. Narrator, where the hell you were? Find your soul in him. That's the plan. You concentrate, peering into the Audra's energy as you would peer into a soul. Its inner light is blinding, but as you become accustomed to it, you perceive the core of the Atra itself, a churning mass of millions of soul fragments. With a jolt, the energy reaches out to you, the Anguithin ruin fragments around you, breaking into incoherent shapes and dissolving to dust, falling into an infinite well of dark gray vapor. Even the ground itself disintegrates into nothingness. All that remains is the murky expanse of the in-between. The Audra Pillar, and a skein of golden threads rooted in the pillar that extend far off into the distance. You focus on the threads. You catch glimpses of memories, your memories, mingled among the memories of thousands of other captive souls. The filaments begin to cohere, rapidly twining into a golden cord. With a muffled crack, the cord ripples outward in a violent wave toward the endless distance. The cord undulates over a space so vast that you lose sight of the wave before it finds its end. Then, a heavy creaking, like the sound of mountains shearing under their own weight, washes through the dull gloom of the in-between. A violent force yanks you along the cord at an incredible speed. The murk of the in-between warps erratically, as though you are observing it through an ill-ground lens. Just as quickly as you were pulled forward, you stop, suspended below a massive figure of ancient carved Audra. Like all Audra, it glimmers with energy, but the souls and memories within it are not flowing down. They churn in a vortex that burns at the heart of the statue's mass in some invisible engine. It is Aethys. The great golden cord terminates in his back, sending pulses of energy throughout his limbs as they move. He walks in long, slow strides toward a brilliant pillar of Audra far in the distance. It shines even more brightly in the in-between than Aethys. From within the teeming throng of souls, dozens of eyes look out to you. Through the cord, their collective anguish and despair push at the edge of your mind. Help us! Please! Help us! Their voices echo in your mind. Somewhere within their ranks, you can feel the presence of your own soul slumbering deeper in the gyre. <clears throat> Reach out to the lost souls. Push past the lost souls to find your own soul. I suppose I need that the most. Eltos is not gonna stop. Find my soul. You attempt to evade the lost souls and find yourself within Aethys. But the incredible power flowing through the gods' body repulses you. Not even your watcher powers can penetrate the massive tides of energy crashing through him. The souls sense your presence and continue to desperately cry out to you. Aethys' stride slows and stops. His head slowly pivots until its great burning eyes are cast back along the cord. As his gaze meets yours, you feel an overwhelming rush of incredible joy mingled with profound sadness. You have sensed similar anguish in lost souls, but never with this intensity. A soothing voice drifts into your mind. It takes great bravery to venture through the in-between, even for a watcher. A swell of admiration radiates out from the god's heart, a force so intense that it momentarily overwhelms you. You do not need to follow me, for their sake or your own. Something beautiful is coming, something that will save us all. A great light shines from Aethys' brow, so bright that even the souls within him flinch from the source, cowering in fear. 
Through the glare, you see Aethys's massive arm reach up to grasp the Golden Cord. The tether carrying energy from the Audra Pillar to him that also suspends your consciousness. Yeah, well, thus, we're not exactly buddies, are we? Give me my soul back. I still have need of it, but do not be afraid, Watcher. Dawn will come for us all in time. How about you just stay dead? Aethys yanks on the golden cord, pulling it from his back. The cord tears into filaments that blacken and dissolve to dust. Without pause, he turns to resume his stride toward the distant pillar of Audra, shining on the boundless horizon. You hear the souls within him cry out for just a moment, before your consciousness is snapped away from them. The in-between goes dark. For a second, you feel a mix of nausea and a sensation like spinning and falling. Then the moment ends. Your consciousness has returned to the Anguithin Arena. The world is sideways, the Audra Pillar upside down. You flinch at the feeling that you're standing on the ceiling. The disorientation overwhelms you and you collapse to your knees next to the luminous Audra Pillar. Previously dim and flickering, the pillar now glows with a strong and steady light. You touch the Audra again, but the chill and prickling sensations you felt before are gone. Replaced with a comforting warmth, like the embers of a fire that has just lost its flame. So what now, Eotas? As you return to the world, you feel a hand on your back. Now who is that? You alright? Come on, we just got your back. Despite his tone, you can see genuine concern in Eder's eyes. I'm fine. Like, what do I expect? Obviously, he's not gonna give it back. I'm fine. I heard you say that before. Had something to do with a 2,000 year old lunatic talking to you in your dreams. It happens to me quite often. I've seen you commune with souls of the dead, but this looked altogether different. What happened? His gaze uh, flickers to the brightingly glowing Adra. That's metaphysics. Eero stuttered himself to the luminous Adra, and I connected to him through the essence. Yep, I guess I knew what happened. Already? Uh, moving things along rather quickly this time, aren't we? His eyebrows rise with sly mischief. What did Gon say? Is he gonna meet us? What do we do next? He charged you with a divine calling, didn't he? Just like he's done for me. <sighs> Alot flashes a quick, please glance. He was headed toward another pillar of Luminous Adra. Yeah, that's not really surprising. How hard can it be to find... In a chain of thousands of islands. Yeah, we might need uh, some directions. I wonder what he's after, and why he's been giving me these dreams. The things I've seen, they leave a mark on your soul. She rubs her arms despite the balmy air. I may not know what Gon's got planned for me, but clearly he wanted me to meet you. Elod hums approvingly. Wow, okay. Well, I'm sorry, Eltas, but you're dying. I don't know what you're up to, but nothing justifies what you've already done. Why not? So, is there something else in this basement? I don't think so. I think we checked out everything. No, not quite everything. Hmm? Yeah. Oh. 
What? What? Come on, guys. Don't be jerks. Shoking touchdown. We can deal with this guy, no problem. <sighs> what do you got here? Yeah, of course. Nothing of interest. Yeah, there's still something uh, to the south. Oh boy. Bam, he took some damage. Of course. Yeah, let's reposition that chili fog. Maybe I should just go with Bewildering Spectacle. Yeah. That should be better. Is that the right thing? Kind of. Hey, watch it with that. All right, not so bad. What? That was a bit much. I should have uh, stood back. Leave it. Got it. Tatter notes. <clears throat> well, I wasn't sure about the constructed uh, constructs at first. These new techniques may be less extreme than those of eccentrics like Galvino, but it gets harder to remember that once the hawking things are moving around like large, noisy, witless dolls. The constructs require daily maintenance and they make the workers uncomfortable. Still, they've been an effective deterrent to the local wildlife and I have to admit I started to feel safer with one of them standing nearby while at work. Odorisi despises uh, the tanks and avoids them if possible. That alone is a considerable benefit. <laughs> Great. Wait, what? Okay. They didn't suffer max HP. Oh, we spotted something as well. Not much. Whoa, there's a chest there? Total mechanics. Yes, pick it. Got it. Sure. Fine dagger. All right, let's go. Uh, by the way, I did uh, look it up, and you need to have sneak and and stealing if you want to use stealing. Uh, these ornate bronze fixtures appear to be braziers, suit lines in. Uh, the interior of their metallic pe petals and you spy fresh coal beneath a uh, filigreed grating. Someone lit these recently. Had you the means, you might do the same. Light the brazier with a torch. Nothing happens for a moment. Then the brazier ignites in a sudden rush of flame. Only the bold, and the reckless and the fortunate shall pass safely within. Let's light it. <clears throat> you scarcely uh, touch the flame uh, to the brazier's surface when it catches with a hollow roar. The flame jets downwards, moving into a narrow channel connecting both braziers. Seriously? That was easy. Mm, um. I'll try not to get roasted. Maybe not that easy. So, what do we have here? It's 
So you need to figure out. It seems like you can't uh, turn the camera. And you need to figure out the correct symbol. Hey. It's impossible to do. Not impossible. Hard. Hard to do by by simply guessing. So it's gonna be a it's gonna take a long time if I try to do that. Question is, do we have any clues? Leave it to me. Because I'm not so sure I do. Okay, we have that. Even if I knew one of the symbols, it's gonna be... It's gonna take some time to figure it out. And I knew none of the symbols. Which is not that great. Okay. Let's see what we can do with this puzzle. Sure. Do I have any... Where's the stash? Not weapons only. How about quest items? This is unrelated. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think any of them are... ...are relevant for this puzzle. I tried to uh, pay attention to symbols, but this is not gonna be uh, one of the dump puzzles. You actually need to pay attention. And it's actually very possible that uh, whatever the solution is, we are not gonna find the clues here. Because the this is the arena sub-level. It's possible that I need to first check out this place. And explore and learn more about it. Uh, definitely keep uh, keep an eye out for notes. So that's a given. Whoa! What the hell, ghosts? As the souls move past you, some turn their heads in your direction, but most seem fixated below you on the Adra pillar beneath your feet. A few nod their heads in thanks or raise a hand to acknowledge your presence. What do you see that I can't, Watcher? Souls, dozens of them, maybe hundreds, they are all going to the Adra pillar. Uh how the how could that be? All of them? Really? She strokes the cage of her lantern, appearing lost in thought. What are you guys doing? A small group of souls has started to cluster around you. One of them is standing a bit closer than the others and gestures for your attention. Watcher, we'd like to come with you. I don't know how I feel about this. Why don't you just go to the Adra Pillar? We would. And we appreciate that you showed us the way, but what if the Adra goes dark again before we reach the beyond? The other souls shuffle anxiously and look to each other and then back to you. Very well, follow me. Can I harvest the souls now? Um, that doesn't sound nice. Yes, of course. Thank you for aiding my mission, Watcher. I just knew you'd help me if I followed you. 
Alot hums approvingly. Sodic glides her hands in a series of motions that resemble a martial art or an intricate dance. As she slides a circle around the area, she begins swinging her lantern faster and farther from her body until an ephemeral light uh, flares from inside. The lure is answered and several souls change course, drifting past the lantern's cage to disappear. Thank you, Watcher. But growth costs. Anyway, Foreman's quarters. Maybe this guy is gonna have uh, a clue about that puzzle downstairs. Yeah, this is a smaller area. Hey. What? Yeah. Cave beetle? With more cave beetles? <laughs> Does this have friendly fire? Did they remove that? To any. No, no, no. It definitely affects uh, uh, companions as well. Sure. Champion's medallion. Note to foreman. One of the workers dug up this old Adra medallion in the sub-level yesterday. I doubt Odoresi would be interested in it. And besides, it looks like it's worth something. Maybe nice surprise to nice to surprise the crew with a bonus. Hmm. Okay, we need to go downstairs with it. Leave it to me. Actually, it's possible uh, that. Uh, the solution is completely different. Yeah, it's a quest item. You can't wear it. I assume that maybe it's possible that... Because it said, like, you need uh, bravery, that you actually need to walk into the fire. Ancient training hall uh, that has two entrances. It's mine now. Oh, trap detected. Sure. And trap disarmed. And trap detected again. No, it's it's combat. Don't you look at that. <laughs> I triggered the trap. This thing isn't doing the job. Quick, toss me something else. No penetration? What kind of armor he has? Seven? Didn't work. Yeah. Nuh-uh, didn't work. Some skeleton guy. Sure. Okay. More combat. No, trap. No, no, no. Can't make a dent. That dog won't hunt. Got it. Let's go. Scout that sorcerer going down. Elot, can you? He's going for a hobble. Not like it really matters. So help me, God, I'll whoop the. Hey, watch. Indeed. Hmm, okay. Chill fog. Okay, we got an extra book. And a fine robe. 
Just in case someone wants to act more often. No, be careful about that. Just use the ray. That dog won't hunt. Hey, watch it. Missed. Hey, watch it. Wow, right, that's that was weird, but also good. That was about as useful as a bump on a pickle. Need something stronger. Why not? Oh, accuracy. Let me give it to Elad. And just put the rest in the stash. I'm actually getting some good stuff. Sword by cell value. Oh yeah, that could be good. Crush, freeze. Fine robes. Okay, let's use the fine robes. It looks a bit weird though. What? Why can I stop changing it? Fine pedal armor as well. Both looks nice. Let's go with the fine robes. What do you have? A lot slaughter armor. Plus area effect bonus. I also know what likes daggers in our party. Do we like hats? Hats seem to have no value. No bonuses, no nothing. Mm, don't care too much about that. Archibus. So this is by value. But I wanna really... <laughs> Recovery time. Should I use two wands instead? Could be good. I don't know. Oh yeah, personal inventory. That's what I wanted. Leave it down. Would you look at this? Yeah, picking locks and uh, getting rid of traps. Leave it to me. That's pretty important. Actually, I might need to change one thing. Uh, auto pause. I like it on two things: trap detected and stop party movement. Yeah. Wait, is there an option to only stop party movement? Now let's go with that. Else you're gonna run into a lot of traps. And I don't like that. <laughs> hmm. Ingvithian dig site. That's it? Yeah. That's about it. Okay, we can go downstairs. And maybe try to figure out this uh, puzzle. So, place the champion's medallion into the depression. Oh, look at that. So, what's over here? Some champion guy? Max health. That's that's good for anybody. Sure. Not that sure. Okay. 
Well, he can use some stealth. So, how do we fix this? Can someone run in and not die? I'm actually yeah. curious about that. Well, don't see why not. Don't see why not? Let's try it. Well, that could have gone better. A quick rest would help if you don't mind. Critical injury. No! no! Damn it! Ugh. Wait, what? Is he like? Is he permanently dead? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> wow. This game. I suppose it was worth a shot, but damn. <laughs> anyway, I suppose this is a good enough time to take a break. Uh, you can lose the game right here if you want to. I would recommend it. So, thanks for watching guys and see you next time.